connective tissue. It is um, called connective tissue pretty much because it connects. And um, as we stated before, of the four types of tissue, there's epithelial tissue, connective tissue, and then muscle tissue, nerve tissue. This is kind of the hardest group to define. It's, um, we've, in our uh, desire to classify things, we try to lump things into groups to make them easier to study. And connective tissue is the one that's kind of the catch-all. What do we do with things that aren't epithelial? They're not obviously muscle tissue and they're not nerve tissue. So if they're not, we call it connective tissue. There are, um, I'm going to just put up the types of connective tissue right here. All right, there are, um, in varying degrees, from something that's very, very, uh, from solid to liquid, or essentially liquid, and varying degrees of, I would say, denseness in between. From the very dense bone tissue to... Uh, some dense connective tissues to uh, some looser connective tissues. Uh, one that's not on here, adipose tissue, which I should make you, which would fit somewhere in here. It's a kind of loose connective tissue. It's called loose because when you look at it under the microscope, uh, it's not dense. It's not full of cells, and the cells are kind of distance apart. And, you'll be able to see what this means in a, when you look at them. So, uh, some verbs that go with connective tissue. Uh, connective tissue obviously connects. It transports. Uh, blood is a transportation mechanism. Um, it cushions. Cartilages, like the hyaline cartilage in your uh, nose and ears, is a cushioning in your knees and joints. It's cushioning. Uh, protective. Again, we could use the cartilage tissue in your nose and ears. Uh, we could use fat tissue, adipose tissue, uh, like behind your eyeballs and around your kidneys. And then supports. Um, cartilage is a support. Ligaments and tendons keep you from falling over. They keep your joints supported. Tendons hold your muscles to bones. So we have these um, varying uh, verbs that go along with this. Now, uh, a, the key characteristic of connective tissue is something called the extracellular matrix. Okay? Prefix extra meaning outside or out of cells. And then matrix just meaning not like the matrix in the movie, but matrix being like uh, uh, stuff, if you will, that's outside of cells. So we have the definition then would be uh, varying amounts of non-cellular stuff outside of the connective tissue cells. And so something like uh, bone tissue is cells, but you already know this, with calcium, phosphorus, and protein outside of it. That forms the extracellular matrix. It's a very dense extracellular matrix. So the cells are surrounded by this matrix of stuff, protein and calcium. It makes it very stiff. Where liquid blood has blood cells, but they're far apart relatively compared to bone cells. They're not so densely packed. They flow because they're surrounded by plasma and other proteins in their extracellular matrix. So um, that's a key characteristic of connective tissue is that it has an extracellular matrix. Now I wanted to go back and talk about one interesting thing about connective tissue and that is its varying degrees its varying degrees of ability to heal. For example uh, bones, if you were to break a bone, that heals in about six weeks. Okay, that's pretty much standard 
Uh, it's probably healed in four weeks, six, two more weeks to strengthen. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later when we talk about skeletal system. But if you were to tear a ligament or tear a tendon the, or tear some cartilage, the healing time is much longer than that. And the question about that is why? Why is the healing time for those things so much longer? And after I give you some time to think about it, well, you have to think about what it takes to heal something. Okay, and to heal something, you have to rebuild it. Correct? You have to rebuild that something. So if you have to rebuild it, the only way the body can rebuild anything is to take what you've eaten and use those particles to rebuild it. Well, how does stuff that you've eaten get, how does a bone or how does a knee ligament get stuff that you've eaten while well, it's carried in the blood? And we say that, for example, bones are very vascular. They have lots of blood vessels running to them. Things like ligaments and tendons are avascular. They don't have very much blood and running to them. They have few blood vessels feeding them. And if you looked at a ligament, when we look at the cats and stuff, you'll see that ligaments are actually white. Then the reason they're white, and you're like, well, bones are white, uh, that's only after they're bleached. Ligaments and tendons in a living thing are white because they're so avascular. There's so few blood vessels in them. So that's an overview of cartilage tissue. I'm sorry, connective tissue.